Hi, everyone. I'm Simone Simpson from Wondering Yoga Cafe Entertainment, and I want to welcome you to our 30-day, one meal a day challenge, day four. <laughs> one, two, three, four. It has been quite a doozy. So there has been, goodness gracious, there's just been a lot that's gone on. Um, my mom is home from the hospital today. And today was the first full day. She was, she came home last night. And so today was the first full day. So there's just been so much and so much that I want to share. And so I'll tell you a lot about that experience, how it relates to one meal a day, the awakening and strength that came into that experience because of one meal a day. And um, which is why the theme for today is <sighs> just when you think you can't, you can. So <laughs> as I said, today is my mom's first full day at home from the hospital. She started, for those of you who haven't seen, she started not mentating well. And I took her to the hospital and she spent about um, more than a week there. I don't really count days. I'm not into that. There was a lady at the hospital. She's like, how many days has she been here? I said, I don't know. And she's like, oh, you lost track. And I'm no, I just never counted days. I just, my focus was on how is she doing physically and how is she mentating and how am I feeling? That was my focus, not counting days. That, that's just not my thing. So anyway, today's our first day home. And when she was in the hospital, she was in isolation. So they tested her, found out she had that, you know, thing that so many people have. So she had that too. Um, and so they, put her in isolation. So they didn't want me in the room with her. <laughs> and so they didn't know how, they didn't get a clear story because she wasn't mentating while her mental status was not clear. She wasn't holding clear conversation. She was just laying there kind of smiling a little bit or not. And so the doctor on Friday, and today for me right now, it is Tuesday evening <laughs> on, it's Tuesday at 6 p.m. I'm in my Las Vegas home. So on Friday, the doctor said that he was discharging her. And the first thought that came to me so strongly was it's too soon. Like she's not herself. Like, how can you discharge her? She, you don't even know what, and it wasn't her attending. It was someone who was filling in because her attending wasn't there that day. So <laughs> like you're discharging her. You're not actually her attending and you don't know what her state is. And I told him, I said, well, her mental status, that's not normal. And then he kind of stopped in his tracks and he said, what? And I said, that's not her normal mental status. That is why I brought her into the hospital. And he said, um, it, so he started going through the list of what they'd found. They'd done an MRI, et cetera. They found a small aneurysm and it's controlled and small. So he said they want to monitor it. They have to monitor it. So we're going to a neurologist for that. Nothing that they are addressing while she's in the hospital. So it's kind of like, if you're going to have an aneurysm, my goodness, that's how you want it. It's like, my mom is just this freight train. Like, I think I can, I am. She's just so strong. She had breast cancer twice, you know, and it was stage zero, like in C2, it hadn't even spread. It was just like, in a, so, but that's the way to have one if you're going to have one and, um, and to find out early, which is what we did. So he mentioned that and he said that, and I had already decided that I wanted a home healthcare nurse. I wanted, I'd already thought about what I wanted. And I wanted um, oxygen for her 24 hours. I wanted like long court cannula so she could have the oxygen anywhere um, in the house. She's gonna be in my house in Vegas for, for, the, for this period. So I was like, knew some of the things that I wanted her to have. And so he um, started telling me like he's scheduling home healthcare, scheduling oxygen. So I was thinking, great, <laughs> that's exactly what, what I had in mind. And so, but, but I also had in mind that she shouldn't come home on Friday. I felt she needed four more days. She was still laying down eating. And 
When you're in the hospital, you have a bed that's automated. It helps you get up. There are CNAs to help you. A physical therapist was coming in. I'm working with her. You've got the RNs. You've got the doctors. That's the kind of care she needed. And I felt she needed four more days. There's a time when you are sick and you need to just lay because your, your body needs to repair and it needs all of that energy, all of that ATP needs to go towards healing. And then there's a time when you have to get up because now your body needs a little bit of help. It needs help pumping, getting the blood flowing through the extremities and it, it needs help. And so it's a delicate balance. You have to know when that was, Friday was too soon. So they kept her. I went up there and um, was there and they wanted me to, was that Friday or gosh, my days are, I don't even know. I, I went up there to the hospital, I think Saturday and they said, they didn't want me to go back. It might've been third, no Thursday. That was Thursday night. And they said, we don't want you up here. She's in isolation. Um, you can't be in there with her. So and I completely understand why. And, and so I said, okay. So I went home and then I felt to myself, like I actually needed that break. Those of you who have had a family member who's been very sick, very ill, you know that there's a time when you just need a break to get your own alignment back. And I work every day at my alignment. I meditate every night for about an hour, every morning for an hour. And now it's 33 minutes because I switched my meditation up a little bit and it used to be an hour and 23 minutes. So I'm meditating twice a day, every day, really working on my alignment. But for a week, I had just been out of alignment. I just was, and what I mean by that, like my mind was going to worry. And I was thinking, this isn't what where I want my thoughts to go. But that is what was happening. I'd bring myself back and go back to worry. And so that was kind of, it's kind of playing tennis with worry um, throughout the week. So I needed that weekend and I had friends who came in town. We went to a Cirque du Soleil show Saturday. We didn't spend time together, but I needed Saturday just for me. And then um, Sunday, oh, Saturday I worked a little bit. Sunday, I went to, uh, to the strip, met my friends. We did, um, we went, we had some wine and then we went to have dinner. So I spent several hours there with them, which was really nice. So at a certain point at dinner, I said to myself, I'm back in my alignment but with all of the meditation and then the unfocus, like they were just such a beautiful distraction. They're so happy. They vibe like me, just totally happy. And so we were just being silly and <laughs> ridiculous and talking and, you know, having some fun conversations, some deep conversations, some growing conversations and, um, but just so appreciative. But I literally, at one point I said, ah, I'm back in alignment. So it was really good for me. And um, so it was nice, a really nice time spent with them. I thanked them. I told them they came at the exact right time. And it was, it was interesting because they came out to see Adele and Adele canceled her show. So, um, but they happened, so they were there with me. And I just kind of thought to myself, I think they were here for me. <laughs> like I, there was probably never going to be an Adele show. They were here for me. Like I, as soon as um, my friend told me that they were coming, I just, I was so excited. I mean, I love them anyway, I, but it was just such good timing. We went to a show and just had a great time. So that's what I did. And then Monday last night, they released her letter home and I don't know, we got home and her, she wasn't mentating well. And then I was just thinking, wow, should I have just gone and sat at the, in the lounge at the hospital? And when the doctor came and did his roundings and had a conversation, but still, if we're not having a conversation in the room with her, it's not as helpful because if I'm with her, then I can tell him this is not normal. And then I can see how she's progressed. Otherwise, what I'm saying is, oh, well, when I talked to her three hours ago, she, she didn't sound normal. But so anyway, I was kind of questioning myself. And I know that's wobble and you're, it's really good to be solid in your decisions. It helps with your alignment. And so that's kind of where I was. So Monday, last night, she came home today. Um, I went in, turned on her diffuser, put some nice oils in there. And she just wasn't meditating while she was just laying down. And, and then at one point I said, well, mom, I want to, I want you to get dressed. I'm going to go walk your dog. I want you to walk just down into the courtyard. I have a gated courtyard in my Vegas house. 
and sit in the sun in a chair in the sun while I walk the dog. And so she's like, okay. And then um, I went in and worked a little bit, came back in. She was in the bed and I was like, well, mom, are you going to get dressed now? I said, well, I just don't want to. And it was really scary for me because it's just me. I don't have anyone else. My brother is not here. He, he um, passed away. And so it's just me. Like I'm not married. I don't have a boyfriend. I broke up with him. <laughs> he's cute, but um, my standards raised because my vibration raised and I just, it, he's a great guy. I mean, he's gorgeous and successful and, but he's not looking. We were in alignment for what we were looking for when we found each other, but now I want something different. There's just something more that, um, that I'm looking for. So I broke up with him. So I was just feeling like, wow, I'm all alone. I don't have anyone to talk to out here. Like the people who I knew, they're kind of, they vibrate a little bit lower. I do a lot of work on my vibration. I didn't want to call old friends because they would kind of hang out in the, ooh, this is a bad thing. And I don't need that. Like one of my brother's old friends called and that's what he was doing. And I was, I just thought I'm not going to talk to him anymore. It's not good. He's in a victim state and he's looking for company. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm not going to talk to him again because I really need to vibe high so that I can get clear answers and understanding in all of this. So I just got so upset and I was just thinking, I don't even know what to do. And I was like, I'm working. So then I went and worked and I love what I do. So I literally worked. And when I work, I completely forgot about the situation. And then I remembered again and I was like, oh, wow. So I went back into my mom's room and was talking to her for a bit. And then I just, you know, she had gotten, she was getting dressed. I was like, I started crying, I think at that point. And she was like, honey, what's wrong? Like prior to that, she's just laying down, eyes closed. And I was like, I'm scared. I said, I'm all alone. I don't have anyone to talk to. You're not mentating. You said, you, you don't seem like you're well. And you won't, you're not getting up, you're not caring for yourself. And what I meant by that was I'd given her some, a cup of some water and some juice. She wasn't drinking that. And I'm like, it's fine not to eat, but water. I was like, mom, you have to drink water. Um, you can't not have water. <laughs> and so she, um, she was like, oh, honey, like when she saw me crying, because I'm, I'm, I'm a crier as far as, oh, look how beautiful the sunset is. But as far as situations, when situations are awry and in a ruckus, I'm the still one, I'm the calm one. And so I was just crying and she hadn't seen that. <laughs> like probably since I was a little girl, I was just crying and crying and crying. And um, she, so she literally immediately sat up. She's like, oh honey, sweetie, I'm okay. And I was like, what? Cause literally like 30 seconds prior, she was on like laying down with her eyes closed. Like, I'm just, I'm just laying it like it just kind of I'm like what she's like sweetie I'm okay and I was like you're okay yes honey I'm okay and I looked she literally seemed okay <laughs> like she seemed and I said she said I'm I said you know and I told her I said if you say you're just sick that's fine I'll understand but I'm really concerned about you you're not acting normal she's like honey I'm just sick I'm just I'm just sick that's all I just want to rest because I'm sick and actually my whole life she's never told me she was sick even when she was sick, she would never say, oh, I'm sick. She would just push through, you know, she, she would just push through. She would, she would continue on. And um, so I was like, what? And I, but I was already started up. Like I was crying and crying and crying. And she was like, honey, darling, sweetheart, honey, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just resting. So huh, she, we, put her, she got up, she put her sweatsuit on. She was trying to show me, I guess, that she was okay. And then um, we start, she like grabbed onto my arm. We started to walk downstairs and I just, like the second stair, I just started crying like aloud. It was no longer a silent cry and I just couldn't stop. And she was like, honey, what's wrong? And I was like, I just couldn't stop crying. And so it was more like a, now when I think back, I was more, releasing and asking, you know, like for help in this situation. I had already set the intention of what I wanted, but it was like a, like, like I'm asking, this is, this is what I, what I need at this time. So anyway, I went downstairs. She sat in the chair in the courtyard in the sun. I went and walked her dog and it was like, you know, you could tell I'd been crying. The neighbor, the next door neighbor was out. I waved, but I'm sure he's looking. You can tell when someone's really been crying. So that's what he saw. 
<laughs> so, um, and then he came down, I could tell he was like, he watched me as I walked, um, you know, probably just trying to make sure everything was okay because the ambulance did come last week. So anyway, <laughs> to my house for my mom. So I walked the dog and as I was walking the dog, the thought, I had the strongest thought, oh, just hire a nurse. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's a great idea. I'm just going to hire a nurse. And so I thought about it and I was like, just two hours a day, seven days a week. That's all. That's all that we need right now. I just wanted someone to come in, get her up, make sure she's, you know, in the mornings, wash her face, brush her teeth, take a shower, um, get dressed, take her downstairs, get her out in the sun and then cook something for her let her eat and then get back to bed. I'm like, she can do her one meal a day in the morning. That's another thing I decided she's going to do one meal a day. She needs the autophagy, the healing. She needs her body not to focus on digesting food so it can focus on healing. And so I was like, not even stressing to her that she's doing one meal a day, but I'm like, I'm in charge now. You get to eat what I'm buying and you get to eat when the food is there. So, um, so that was, it was just so comforting. So I came in, I was like, mom, I was like, I'm going to hire a nurse. And she said, well, you already said you were going to do that. I was like, yeah, I guess I had, but I'd kind of wavered on that. I guess, you know, I don't know. I, I, I kind of wavered. So then I was trying to find a company, get to hire a nurse to come out. And then we already had the home healthcare nurse that was coming. So then I went, you know, back to work, started working. It was really interesting because I just had that huge cry. So I'm thinking my vibration is low. And one of the things I always know about my vibration is I can tell how I'm vibrating by how much I'm selling and in my business and my career. So I, as soon as I went from that big, huge crying mom got mom back into her room she was sitting on her bed went back into my office picked up a call and sold enough of the amount that you'd actually sell in a day so I did that in one call and I was like okay well obviously I'm not vibrating really low and I said well my my normal my inherent vibration is happy it's fun it's joy so when I cry or get a little wobble that's a temporary thing and I go back to my normal joy happy which is why I can laugh in the middle of anything <laughs> because it's just I'm just at joy so so that was really good so then the nurse came and she was like an answer to my asking it was she as soon as I saw her as soon as she said hello I knew that I was like wow she's great she's efficient and then she went in, started talking to my mom. And I thought that was interesting that she didn't ignore my mom and talk to me. And I thought maybe she and I should talk separately. And then she go in there with this thought of what I was going to implant. But no, she was dealing directly with my mom. And then when she came, then when we were talking, asking a few questions, I opened up a closet that I have. And I have like a glucometer, blood pressure cuff, and oximeter, pulse ox, things like that. And so she saw everything. I showed her my mom's meds and I asked her what my mom's sugar was. She hadn't checked it. And she was like, oh, I didn't bring a glucometer. I was like, oh, I have one. <laughs> you know? So, but anyway, she said to me, I'm going to send you a, a, a CNA twice a week. She said, I'm also going to have a physical therapist come and they're going to work with her. And she doesn't know how many days a week they'll be with my mom. They'll determine it based on when they come. I'm assuming they'll probably do five to, to seven days because they want to keep get her up every day. She said, she's also sent, she said, and the CNA will help with her getting showers, cooking meals. And I just thought, what? <laughs> like how? It was just so, it was everything that I wanted. And it was this help, this asking that, that I had asked for. And she said, and I'm also sending a nurse practitioner because they, so that they can readdress her meds. And, um, and you can, then that way you can talk to her because she actually heard me when I said the doc, I wasn't able to go into the room with the doctor. So they're assessing her, but I wasn't there. They don't know what's normal and she's not giving a clear picture. And so it was like, she went into the center of my heart and her heard everything. And so, um, yeah, 
<laughs> the answer to my prayers. And I just literally had to walk away because tears started coming down, just tears of relief, of thank you, of this is the, the, the answer to my asking. And so then I collected myself, went back and we were chatting. And then I showed her the cabinet and she said, you're really hands-on. And she said, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take care of this immediately. She said, because you have to be okay. She said, I don't want you to get sick um, as her caregiver. And she said, um, she said, so that's why I'm ordering all of these things for you all of these people. And I just, tears came again. And I told her, I said, thank you. I said, I appreciate you. I said, I, um, I, I told her, I said, you're answering every, every ask that I had in this, you, you've come with the answer. And I said, you're like, you flew in like an angel. So, that was that. <laughs> and all of that's covered, of course, with insurance. And so I was just so relieved and so pleased. <laughs> and so at that point, prior to talking to the nurse, I was feeling this kind of pain in my stomach and I had zero hunger. Now back to one meal a day, I had zero hunger. I had already rescheduled my meals. I was going to eat at one o'clock. Previously in the first three videos, I was eating at 3 p.m. Well, now I changed my work schedule. I now start work at 6 a.m. And I, I made that choice. Today I started at five, but tomorrow and forward, I'm going to start at six. And so I decided I'll eat at one. Well, like 11, I was like, I'm nowhere near hungry. I'm probably, I, I don't think I'll eat today at all. I know I would have something to drink, but some juice, I have some really nice cold pressed juices that I know I've shown you in other videos, but I knew, but I wasn't going to eat. And I was like, wow, this feeling in my stomach. I was like, this is the feeling I had like in high school when I broke it with my high school sweetheart. Like I haven't felt like this in years. It made me wonder like, Hmm, my other few breakups, I guess weren't that bad because <laughs> the feeling I had didn't remind me of my boyfriend who I just broke up with. It didn't remind me of my college boyfriend. It reminded me of my high school sweetheart boyfriend breakup. You know who you are, <laughs> but you know, we're not mad at each other. <laughs> he's actually, he's a, he's funny. It was, but anyway, he, that's what that pain reminded me of. I hadn't felt like that. I was like, oh my goodness. I did not know that this is how I was going to feel. <laughs> so after the nurse told me what she was doing and I just felt such a relief and I was thinking, I want to give you a review and I just want to say thank you. And, and, um, and that's what you have to do. Let people, when, when, let people give their own testimonials and reviews, you don't have to hound them for it. I do it out of inspiration. I was inspired to do that. So that, so she left, but something that I wanted to say is I had said out loud what I wanted. And I was actually talking to my mom um, when I was in the hospital, when she was being discharged, as we were getting ready before the, the nurses came in to help, I said, I want a home health care nurse. I want her to be efficient. I want her to be happy. I said, I want her to be in love with life. I want her to love life. I want her to be, uh, just in heart. I, I was just deciding what I wanted. I said, I want her to be with me the way I am with my clients, just to handle everything from beginning to end and efficient and happy. And, and I got that. And then I said, and I also want a, a physical therapist. I said, I want to hire a physical therapist for you to the point that the other night I went and I wrote down a list of the things that I was going to, to purchase. And if you look, I don't want to show you everything, but if you look here, there's a chef. I was like, I want a chef, chef for my mom, a PA. I'm going to get, um, what is that? Oh, a trainer for mom, a trainer for me. And I was like, well, hey, if she gets a trainer, I need a trainer as well. <laughs> and then um, a PA for mom, a personal assistant for her. But 
And then an MD for me, basically an MD to come with me to doctor's appointments. It kind of keeps doctors accountable and lets them know, I mean, and that's really how you need to come suited up. If you're going to a doctor and if you're not a doctor, what kind of conversation are you really having? <laughs> if you go in there with a doctor, like this is my uh, power of attorney, I guess is what, or I wouldn't sign on the power of attorney, Ooh. but whatever I would have to legal term, I would have to give the doctor. Now there might be different stipulations about who can go in, but that was what, why that was on my list. And so I was like, wow, I actually got a couple of these checked off the chef because the, 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 the aid is cooking. I got the trainer for mom and yeah, I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so that is, um, that was on my list. So that's something that I wanted to share with you about the, the one meal a day. And I wanted to, to let you know about, I wanted to let you know about the one meal a day and how this affected my mom. So this morning she, you know, wasn't very coherent and just kind of asking questions. She just, just not very coherent. I just want to say that I don't want to put it all out there because it's my mom, I don't, you know, she can and she, but I don't want to put it, but she wasn't very coherent this morning. And then the, the nurse came, the RN came, we had that conversation. Well, while the RN was there, she mentioned eating or something. She mentioned food and that was fine. And then I think a little bit later, she was like, oh yeah, yeah. Cause I think the RN came at like one. So she mentioned food and I said, yeah, I said, I think I, I have this meal plan that I order <laughs> and I'm contemplating, should I keep it? But for now I have it. So I was excited because this is what I was going to make today. You can see that those are, um, plant-based protein tacos. And I'm kind of wobbly about that because I'm feeling like there's soy in it and I kind of cut soy out of my diet. So yeah, <laughs> but I was excited about making that. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to order anything. She was like, oh honey, um, can you order something? Can you order chicken noodle soup? And earlier that day, she was like, I was like, I was like, mom, you want some, you want, she's like, I want some soup. And I was like, you do. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, what kind? She said, hmm what kind do you suggest? And I was like, what kind do you want? She's like, what kind do I like? You know, and that was bothering me, you know, cause I'm like, you know what you love. <laughs> so, so, but I didn't say anything. I just listened. I didn't say anything until I started wailing on the stairs crying. Oh. So, but anyway, I had the dish and at one o'clock she, she started mentioning it that, you know, mentioned food. And I was like, yeah, I said, I'll be finished working at about two. And then then we'll eat, I'm gonna make some food. And then at like two o'clock, she came into my office. Like she got up, came in there and she's like, I'm getting ready to go downstairs to cook some food, to, to make something to eat. And I was like, wow, she's hungry. I actually was hungry too, because of what the nurse had, the RN had offered, um, what she set up, that angst in my stomach went away. So then I realized, yeah, I, I can eat today. And so I was actually really hungry when she came into my office, but I was still working. And she was like, I'm going to go downstairs and make some food. And I said, well, I'm ordering something. She said, you are? And I said, yeah. I said, what do you want? She said, the Bagel Cafe. That's our favorite, one of our favorite places. It's a kosher restaurant. It's delicious. And so she's like, Bagel Cafe. And I was like, okay. I said, what do you want? She's like, mm, chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Cause that's what they have chicken noodle soup. And then she said tomato soup. But I was like, I don't know that they have tomato soup there. I know they have chicken noodle soup and of course matzo ball soup. So she was like, I wanted that. So I said, okay, I said, I will, um, I'll order it. I'll order bagel cafe. Cause at that time I had gone into just, I was really tired because I'd spent so much energy crying <laughs> and worrying like that's a lot of energy. And I, you know, I did change my schedule today. I actually got up at three in the morning so that I could meditate. I had a meeting at work at five. So I got up much earlier than I, you know, I was actively working much earlier than normal. And normally I'm up, not at three, but so I was like, wow, I was like, she's up and 
clear and telling me what she wants. And she was ready to go downstairs and I would have been all for it, but I didn't know what she would be able to make. Like I've got the meal kits and that's, I think you've got to follow directions for that. I think if I would have had, you know, like a tossed salad and something easier to make that it, it would have been fine. So, so then I ordered the food and it was scheduled to be delivered at, it was scheduled to be delivered. I could hear it when they delivered it because I could hear the, the delivery guy when he came into the courtyard. So I went in my mom's room. I said, mom, I said, I think the food is here. I was still working. So I wasn't going to go down and get it then, but I was like, I think it's here. And she's like, really? I said, yeah, I think, that, I think they just delivered it. So I went back into my office and finished working. I had about 15, 20 minutes left that I wanted to just clean up, finish up for the day. And when I finished, I went, I looked in her room. She wasn't in there. She was downstairs. She had gone outside, gotten the food <laughs> and they sent me a picture of it. So they actually didn't bring it into the courtyard. They had it outside of the courtyard. So she went out, opened the gate, got the food, closed the gate, brought, came in, brought it in the kitchen, unpacked the food and started eating. <laughs> when I came in, she was eating standing up, which is like her favorite thing to do. She said when she was a little girl, her mom would say, at least sit down and eat. <laughs> She and her brother, Johnny, she said they would just stand up in the kitchen and eat. And their mom would always say, at least sit down and eat, <laughs> at least have a seat. So that's her in her element, standing up eating, like that's her thing. So I was like, wow, she's even standing up eating. I'm like, I didn't say anything to her, but I wanted to mention that because that stretch of not eating, I didn't bring her breakfast. Now I did bring her water. Um, was there really, it's alkalized water. I brought our alkalized water. That's water that's basic pH um, at about a nine and a half, I think. So alkalized water and a cold pressed juice. It's orange, pineapple. I think there's a hint of lemon in it, but a cold pressed citrus juice that I brought her as well. So it's called immunity, I think. No, no, it's not called immunity. But I brought her that that morning, but no food. So that stretch of not eating. Now, when I went to her hospital room last night, the hospital room she was in, <laughs> when I, I want to be careful what I claim, but so when I went to the hospital room she was in last night, she was eating dinner. So she'd probably finished about 5% of it. Maybe it had a couple of bites, but it was like pasta. And, and I was just looking at that. <laughs> I was thinking of that every time I saw her eat and they're like, how are you supposed to heal eating this stuff and eating all day long? Like if you're going to eat that, then eat it, eat one meal a day. So your body can do the autophagy and can release the fluids and the salts. And, <laughs> but if you're eating all day long, don't eat all day long is, is what I say for me. So anyway, we're here, but that stretch of not eating caused her to have this desire and this strength. And she got up to go and hunt basically like she was that hungry and she went up she she chased her meal she was clear mentally she was strong she was determined and i thought this is one meal a day like the normal mindset especially you know where i am is you bring them breakfast on a tray and then you bring them lunch and then you bring them dinner well I didn't bring her any, I mean, I brought her water and juice, but, <laughs> but by three o'clock, she was downstairs in the courtyard, getting the food and then in the kitchen, eating it. And that's good. That was good exercise. She needed to get up, needed to get out of bed. And then she sat down at the table, was talking with me, was mentating well. And I'm like, wow, look what this did. This just having this nice stretch of not eating. And so I just feel that so significant and something I wasn't expecting to see. We are starting the class on, on the, <laughs> we're starting class. Um, I don't know what date you'll be watching this video. I was gonna give the date of when the class is starting, but if you go to the website, Snap Back Body Wild, you will see the link to when the next class is. I invite you to join because that is the class. I'm, my mom will be in the class and, and, and she's getting ready to join the next class. I'm going to, I'm the, the coach in training until I'm the certified coach, but I'm the coach in training. 
And at this point, and probably by the time you see this video, I'll probably be an actual coach, but we'll see. Um, doesn't, I don't know when you'll see the video, but I'm the coach in training right now. And the videos that you'll get to see are the videos that I saw when I went through the program. So it's the same videos. The founder made the videos. So you have a video a day for the first couple of weeks and they're 10 to 15 minutes. I would watch, I watched mine in the mornings when I was making my coffee because that, kept me going through the day with the tone of what we're doing, what we're focused on. And they're short videos, but I would listen to them. And then after the first couple of weeks, you get a video Monday and a video Friday. However, we have every Monday and Friday, our live class with our, with our classmates. And so that's really important. We have class on Wednesdays as well. So and that's really, that's a time where you can ask questions, you get support from, from our community, and um, you can share your wins and, and get tips on how to continue on with this. But I went through the program and it was never hard. I was never hungry. You don't ever count or measure anything. You get to eat as much as you want. I, I don't know how. I released 20 pounds on the, on when I went through my 90 day, but what the major thing I did was heal. I healed my blood cholesterol, blood sugar. I healed my blood pressure, my triglycerides. I healed all of that. I healed my lungs. And that was the major thing. The, the releasing 20 pounds during the 90 day was, um, was a side effect of the healing that I did. And then from the time my class ended on November 23rd until January the 6th, I released another 10 pounds. So how often, what was that? November, December, how often six weeks after you've finished your health program or diet, whatever you've done, have you released another 10 pounds? <laughs> Most people six weeks after have put on six pounds <laughs> and they're saying, I'm going to do it again. Was in it, it was 10 pounds that I released. And then in the next four or five months or so, another 10 pounds. Like it's just, it, it's a transformational health program. It changes the way you think about food. It actually does. Another win from this experience is when I was like in high school, when I was upset, I wouldn't eat. I couldn't eat. And actually, you're not supposed to eat when your body's upset. Your body cannot get the nutrients from the food if you're in, if your sympathetic nervous system, if you're in that response, it can't get the nutrients from the food. So you're not supposed to eat during that time. You let your stomach rest. You let it digest. You, you don't put anything in your stomach when you're like that. There was a point when I got to, when, when I developed a habit of when I was upset, I would eat. And so I kind of overrode that not hunger thing, but I'm like, it's actually better to not eat when you're upset. Number one, you can lose a few pounds. <laughs> Number two, you're not causing your body to, to, to take all that blood and put it in your stomach and digest when you might need it to, to relax. So that was something that happened. I was like, wow, I'm actually upset and not hungry. This is the first time this has happened since high school. I'm like, this is great. I'm like, whoo, yeah, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of time on that, but I noticed that like, I didn't run for food. I didn't think, oh, wow, I can't wait to eat. I'm on one meal a day. I didn't, I wasn't going to eat. Had, had, um, I not gotten the relief that I got from with the nurse and the asking and getting the answers and receiving that I wouldn't have eaten today, which, it, but, but I didn't eat until, so anyway, I was scheduled to eat at one. I ended up eating at three. <laughs> so that was another really good thing that came out of it. Like I, I'm no longer a stress eater and that's something that, this is, let's see, I finished my wild fit program about a year, exactly a year and a month ago. And so right now, as I'm filming this video, it is January the 23rd. So a year and two months ago is when I finished my wild, my program. And now my body has switched back to not eating when I'm upset, which is what your body's supposed to not do is not eat when you're upset. So that's another win that came out of this. So much came out of it. Like my mom just persevering, being determined and strong to go and get her food. It was like, she was hunting for it. Like I'm hungry. I'm getting up. I'm getting food. Like, it's like, 
whoa, she had clarity. And, but it was, only, it was like, she was in autophagy for a few hours. And so she cleared up and then she was ready to eat. So I'm like, this is our plan. <laughs> so we're going to one meal a day it. This is day four. I'm glad to share and did kind of the tips and tricks a little bit differently today, but just letting you know that um, our, our tip for today is just, just when you think you can't, you can. Just when you think you can't, you can. You can. <laughs> yeah. And I am so glad you watched this today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, hit that little tiny right there <laughs> and subscribe. And if you feel so excited to do it, snapbackbodywild.com, come and join our 90 day challenge. We, we continue to have them, but join us. It's a lot of fun. We have a great group of people there. And I would love for you to share with me your wins after you complete your program. It's, it's just, it completely changes the way you think about food. It's, there's nothing temporary about this. Any other diet I've done where I was counting or eating certain things or not having certain things, that was a temporary thing that I no longer follow. But this program, it changes permanently, changes the way you think about food. And it does. So I will be excited to see you in the program. Thank you so much for watching. This is day four, one meal a day. I'm Simone Simpson from Wondering Yoga Cafe Entertainment. See you on the next one.